Yeah, it's great. Wow, it's good. Woo, it's hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello and welcome to Bike Wale and this is the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX and it is a brilliant motorcycle. So much so that we struggle to find cons of this motorcycle. But then we are a relentless bunch and we found a couple and to mark that achievement, well, here are five things that really work in the motorcycle's favor, things that you'd want to buy it or make it a, what makes it a no-brainer purchase and of course two cons that may make you want to reconsider looking at this bike. So let's start with the pros. With a seat height of 835 mm and of course the motorcycle's curb weight, the Ninja 1000 might seem daunting. But once you swing a leg over, now if you're wearing something that's tight, then of course it'll be a little struggle because as you can see, the subframe is angled up and this rear seat itself is pretty thick. Now when you're in the rider's seat, I'm 5'9 and I can put both my feet on the ground. I'm still uh, tiptoeing a bit, but not that much. And that should give the rider the confidence to manage uh, the 200 plus curb weight that the motorcycle has. And then when you're riding, you can see that the footrest is rear set, but not extremely so. It's also not very high. So the angle that your leg makes remains comfortable even longer hours of travel. Then of course you have the handlebar which is uh, high and wide so it makes uh, for a again comfortable seating or uh, your upper body remains comfortable so if you sit right at the back you can see that there's a slight bend in the body but if you move up front let's say when you're commuting then you have a more straight up riding position so overall you can spend long hours on this motorcycle be it commuting or when taking a road trip because overall seating ergos are comfortable and then the seat itself also is pretty wide and cushy so overall I think uh, that's a strong positive for the Ninja 1000. It also comes packed with features does the Ninja 1000 SX. There is a full color TFT screen that offers Bluetooth connectivity. It also has two display options and it throws up info like brake and throttle usage, lean angles achieved and the more basic trip distance readouts. The bike gets a tools-free, four-way adjustable front windscreen. There's cruise control, riding modes, and of course, a dual channel ABS. It has a two-way quick shifter too, which works seamlessly during upshifts, but somehow requires the rider to close the throttle during downshifts. The Ninja 1000 SX also gets cornering ABS along with the brakes, also helping the rider keep his or her line when trail braking into corners. There's traction control and fully adjustable front and rear suspension as well. Now the comfortable ergos are only part of what make the Ninja 1000 an easy motorcycle to live with. Now before we get to that, what are the other bits that help uh, towards that? Let's just address the elephant in the room, which is the motorcycle's curb weight. It weighs 238 and that is not light. However, the Ninja 1000 is a well-balanced motorcycle. All you have to do is find the right balance point and then it becomes pretty easy to move the bike around. It's also got decent turns lock to lock so you won't struggle with that. So whether you're moving it here like we are during the shoot or if you're moving it around let's say in your parking. If you find that balance point it's actually quite easy to manage the 238 curb weight. Now the other bits that make the Ninja an easy motorcycle to live with, the clutch, you can operate it just using one finger, it's light, there's good modulation, so that helps. You've also got throt the throttle that's light and when you ride it in road mode, uh, the linearity and the predictability make it easy even if you're not used to big bikes. We also like the clocks, they're easy to read on the move once you know what to look for and where to look for because there is quite a bit of data in there but once you know uh, you know, where your uh, trip meter is, where your RPM is, where your speed is, where your lean angle sensor is, for instance. We also love the lights on the Ninja 1000. We rode this bike in the morning for the shoot, in the dark, 
and the spread as well as the depth of throw just makes it so easy to ride this motorcycle even at triple digit speed. So that's gonna prove really good if you're gonna leave early in the morning, let's say for long tours. The engine on the Ninja is a 104 3cc inline four. It makes 142 bhp and 111 newton meters of peak torque. And even though this torque might peak at 8000 rpm, the 1000 SX is more than alive and kicking and in fact in a tearing hurry from 4000 rpm. Now whether you are puttering around in the city or going hell for leather on the highway, this engine sounds lovely. At slow speeds it has a don't mess with me kind of quiet growl. And then when you open the taps, the sweet symphony of a Japanese inline 4 never fails to give you goosebumps. And though it's not a high revving engine this, it's a hugely potent one. The torque is everywhere and it's a massive slab that just picks you up and hurls you towards the horizon every time you give the throttle a purposeful turn. And knowing that there's a suit of electronics working overtime to keep things the right way up only eggs you on to go red line chasing. More like an addiction than an occasional slip in sanity. The Ninja gets three riding modes and though the sport mode gives the SX a bit more spunk, the road mode is more than adequate for most riding needs. The difference is mostly down to how aggressively the bike responds to throttle inputs. As for the rain mode, well, it was hot and dry and not wet at all. So we skipped that option completely. It's amazing the magic a good suspension setup can work up. Now this one here, it's a heavy bike. It's a long wheelbase motorcycle. It's also a low motorcycle. So there isn't a lot to play with in terms of suspension travel. But the way the Ninja rides is absolutely amazing. You give it a low amplitude, series of bumps, or if you take it over road joints, or if you arrive at a trough in the road without realizing, it just soaks everything so well that uh, it probably considers all of it as such a minor inconvenience that it doesn't even communicate it to the rider. So in that sense, it's comfortable, it's relaxed, it's pliant, it's flat. And that for a big bike, a liter class motorcycle, just makes it a thing that you like and love and appreciate because you're not chasing corners all the time. You're going to be using it for touring, you're going to be using it for commuting and on that front, the suspension works really well. The only challenge is handling. Now, low speed handling, let's say you're doing bumper to bumper or crawling traffic, you will find that uh, it is a little cumbersome to move around. As soon as the road opens up, you've got wide flowing corners, you've got straight roads, again, the Ninja starts to feel really well sorted. It just flows beautifully one corner into the other. It's only then again when you come into tighter corners that uh, you need to work the motorcycle a little more. It starts to move around. So you got to be a little careful and mindful about what you're doing. Now, this is, of course, in the suspension setup that Kawasaki has sent the motorcycle in. It has a fully adjustable front. It has a preload and rebound adjustment for the rear suspension. So if you have the inclination, you can work at it and improve uh, whatever little, uh, let's say shortcomings that we said in terms of going around tighter corners that it seems to move around, maybe that'll settle down. So it has, you have that sort of flexibility that the motorcycle offers. And so suspension on this bike is a huge plus again. Now this here is a Tourer, so it's not surprising that it comes with this tall windscreen. And this windscreen itself is adjustable four ways. You've got a small button here or a lever, you push it down and you can have four steps. Now, which is all good, but the thing is that no matter whether you put it in this fully slanting position or in the more upright position, I found that the wind blast to the chest and the helmet just didn't disappear. And this is, uh, we're talking, you know, we're doing speeds of uh, just about 100 kilometers per hour, a little lower. Now you can work around that by tucking in, uh, which isn't uh, the most comfortable. You can't keep 
yourself tucked in for really long uh, periods of time. The other option, of course, is what we've done in many other bikes in the past is to get an extension and that sort of creates a wall that you need. But as a product straight out of the factory, we thought that this should have been slightly better designed uh, so that uh, we didn't get that wind blast. Especially if it's adjustable, it should have played some uh, or it should have made some difference, which to us, it didn't. 1000 cc and 140 bhp exciting figures and exciting figures demand an exciting design now if you look at the ninja 1000 the front end it is an exciting design it's got an aggressive front fairing and overall there's lots going on here multi-layered and it stands out but then when you zoom out a little and you find that this is a bulky motorcycle it's a tall motorcycle with fat seats and a subframe that's not really angled as in a racy bike now, if you're a mature buyer, when you understand what the Ninja 1000 delivers, of course, this styling will work with you because it is a good looking motorcycle. But as a trophy motorcycle, the Ninja 1000 just doesn't work. Now, when you buy uh, big bikes, a lot of buyers want a motorcycle that they can brag about, that they can showcase and show off to people. And that happens with an aggressive sporty design, which the Ninja 1000 doesn't have. So if you're looking for a trophy bike, which majority of the people do uh, in big bike when they bike big bikes, the Ninja 1000 just doesn't cut that. Like we said at the start, the Kawasaki Ninja 1000 SX is a brilliant motorcycle to buy no matter how you cut it. You're looking for something comfortable, you're looking for something fast, you're looking for something that's easy to live with, go touring on, commute on. The Kawasaki delivers all. Yes, if you are slightly mature, you'll understand this styling and it won't be an issue. And for Wind Blast, there's always a cheap solution in terms of getting wiser extension. So the two cons that we listed, well, you can work around them because the pros clearly are loaded in the bike's favor. Now, if you're looking for a 1000cc motorcycle priced at under 14 lakh rupees, this is not your only option. You also have the Speed Twin from Triumph, which is 1200cc. You've got the Ducati Scrambler 1100, if you're looking for something that's on off-road. And then, of course, you've got the Harley-Davidson 48. Again, 1200cc, more of a relaxed cruiser. But looking at all of those things, looking at the value that they deliver, be it the power, be it the tech, be it what you can do with these bikes on a daily basis, the Kawasaki just wins hands down in our book. Now consider this, you're heading to work in the morning and you realize your primary car is punctured. Now you're feeling too lazy to change the tire or you feel you're too well dressed. Well, with this bike in the garage, you can just reach for the keys and head out. It doesn't matter what road you're going to take, it doesn't matter what the traffic's going to be like, it doesn't matter what the weather's going to be like. Now that's something you can't say about most big bikes. And that's the thing that makes the Kawasaki Ninja 1000SX even more endearing.